A rare phenomenon known as the annular solar eclipse will be visible here on Boxing Day. It's returning to Singapore's skies for the first time in 20 years. At about 11.27 a.m., Singapore will experience a partial solar eclipse. Now, this is when the moon blocks off part of the sun like this. At about 1.22 p.m., the moon directly crosses in front of the sun, forming the annular solar eclipse that's expected to last for two minutes. Now, when this happens, you'll see a ring of fire around the moon and the sky will appear overcast. The annular eclipse is expected to reach its peak at about 1.23 p.m. Now, that's when the moon will be closest to the sun's center. A partial solar eclipse will follow. We'll follow that as the moon moves away from the sun's center and the whole phenomenon is expected to end at about 3.18 p.m. Now, to shed light on <laughs> this, we're joined by Dr. <laughs> Eil Yang from the National University of Singapore's Physics Department. Dr. Yang, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, so tell us, how is an annular solar eclipse different uh, from a total solar eclipse? Well, in an annular solar eclipse, the moon is slightly closer to the Earth, so we get to see the ring of fire. But in the case of a so total solar eclipse, the moon is slightly further, so it is, sorry, it's slightly closer, actually. Mm. Uh, so that it can cover the entire surface of the sun. Mm. So in an annular solar eclipse, what we see on Earth will be the sky just darkens as if, uh, you know, it's noontime, but it will feel as dark as evening. Mm. Whereas in a total solar eclipse, it would be total darkness. Mm -hmm. We've had some pretty overcast skies uh, this past month, a couple of months actually, you know, does cloud cover impact what we'll see on Boxing Day? Uh, yes, in some sense it will impact what we'll see in that, well, obviously you wouldn't get to see the sun, but you would also feel, well, you still feel it getting darker. Mm. So it'd get extra dark. Mm. Yes. And this would be at 1.23 in the afternoon, so the, it's discernible. Probably yeah. discernible unless the clouds are really, really thick. Okay. But the weather forecast for next week seems somewhat promising. Mm. Okay. So, so every, time, every time we hear of, a, of an impending eclipse of any kind, we hear, oh, it's the first in 20 years, it's the first in 100 years, and, and so on and so forth. How rare is the one that's coming up this, this Boxing Day? Well, solar eclipses happen about once every six months, but uh, the visible parts of the world where the world, the parts of the world that can see the solar eclipse, that's actually much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. So if you were to stay in Singapore and wait for a solar eclipse, a major solar eclipse like this, you would probably have to wait maybe 50 to 150 years. Mm. So you probably won't see the next one. Let's put some, do some quick mathematics. <laughs> well, I suspect that mathematics is involved when it comes to the predictions of when such eclipses will occur. Can you sort of walk us through how, how they make these predictions? Well, what you need for an eclipse is for the Earth, Moon and Sun to line up in a straight line in 3D space. So ancient astronomers pretty much figured out that this happens once every 18 years. Mm. Uh, as in, there's a cycle that repeats once every 18 years. But in reality, it repeats every six months, just that you also have to be in the right place and the right time in order to see it. Mm. Mm. And, and I, I mean, being in Asia as well, you know, some, some people say that that impacts um, how rarely we actually get to see uh, such eclipses. Uh, tell us more about that. How does our position on the globe affect that? Actually, there's no effect on that. Oh. Mm. Everywhere on the globe has an equal chance of getting an eclipse. Where did that come from? Where did, is, where did you, where, did you just no, thought, make that up? No, no there was, I, I, I've heard that there has been, you know, there's been talk about Urban the mismatch myth. the rotation of the Earth, the yeah. rotation, oh, okay. timing. Right. Uh, well, that's a myth that's been debunked. Okay. Now. okay. <laughs> what about how you view it? You know, sometimes you hear you've got to wear special glasses and so oh, on. Yes. You, you do you need that? Yes. Uh, okay. One of the most important things is never look directly at the sun mm. without proper protection. Even during an eclipse? Even during an oh. eclipse. Right. So whatever's visible of the sun is enough to burn your eyes. Mm -hmm. So to look at the sun, we would have to look through something like this. Okay. This is an eclipse viewer card. There's 
a special film here, yes. which blocks out most of the harmful light. Actually, all the harmful light. Mm -hmm. Can I have a look at that? And lets through a very little amount mm -hmm. that's just safe for your eyes. Okay, just to provide the perspective of somebody who's actually looking at it, I can't see anything <laughs> yes. through this, and it's be because nothing here is as bright as what it would be. Yes. It would be that's super right. bright. Yeah, yeah but sure why don't you can, point sure it at one of the studio lights, though? Pick it up. Yeah, it's Our just studio just lights are not, they don't have the brightness of the sun. <laughs> the other way is a more uh, amateur but very effective way. It's a bit, well, all you do is take a piece of cardboard, yeah. cut a hole in it, mm. and on the other side, stick a piece of aluminium foil and take a pin and poke a small hole in the middle. Mm. Right. So what this does is to have a very small hole for sunlight to filter through. Mm -hmm. Hold this up to the sun, and instead of you don't look through the hole, you look the other way. Mm. I see. So it will project an image of the sun ah. onto the ground, or you can hold up a piece of paper mm. behind it, and you can see the eclipse. That sounds day. like something that you want to do with the kids. That yes, use for holidays, right? arts and crafts over mm. the weekend. That's for Boxing Day, 1:23 p.m. Get it ready for them, <laughs> folks. Thank you very much for coming Thank into you. the studios and sharing that with us, uh, Dr. Yang. That's very, very interesting. Uh, we've been speaking there to uh, Dr. Abel Young from the NUS Physics Department.